Those were shocking scenes from the Kabul airport, the capital of Afghanistan. Both Western nationals, Americans, Brits, Canadians, etc., scrambling to get out of the capital city, but also thousands, maybe tens of thousands of local Afghans who have worked closely with the Western allies these 20 years. As I mentioned yesterday, the median age of an Afghan is a teenager, 18 and a half years old. So most Afghans have grown up their entire life under a sort of Western protectorate that collapsed so quickly. What will happen to the people on the ground? And what should Justin Trudeau do? Joining us now to talk about this is someone who's been to Afghanistan as a veteran, as a soldier. I'm talking about our friend T. Lee Humphrey, the boss of James International Security Consulting. Lee, great to see you again. Welcome. I, uh, I wonder if you could start by sharing with us some personal reflections, if you felt like sharing them, on places that you know and places that you fought to free, now returning to the hands of the Taliban. Yeah, so, you know, I spent uh, well over a year uh, as the head of the uh, private security force that protected the U.S. Embassy in Kabul. And then while working for an engineering firm that uh, was doing infrastructure projects throughout the country, I, I was blessed to visit uh, the South, the North, Kandahar, Kabul, or Kandahar, Helmand, uh, Mazia Sharif, you name it, I, I got around the country. And then um, again, working for that same country in, in the past years, uh, places like the Salang Tunnel, going back into Kandahar to an old Canadian uh, forward operating base called Frontenac and working on a dam project that the Canadians uh, began and, and uh, U.S. Corps of Army engineers uh, finished. So I, I've, I've been blessed by, by not only working in the big cities, but also getting out into the rural districts and seeing the the, the differences in meeting uh, vastly different types of Afghans from all parts of that country. And uh, it's, it's incredibly sad. I've been uh, snowed under with phone calls, texts, uh, emails over the last two weeks seeking help and uh, reminding me of some of the conversations I had. I think the saddest I can share with Canadians was I, uh, I got particularly close to a, a gentleman who was a driver fixer for me for, for many, many years. And I went to his wedding. And when his first child was born, he allowed me as the first Westerner to hold that young daughter because he knew I had two daughters. And we had talked about my daughters and fatherhood and, and the responsibilities uh, of, of that uh, many times. And he reminded me that I told him at the time that his daughter could now have the same opportunities as mine. Uh, she's 12 now, and, and he reminded me again that there's no hope for her to have those opportunities and, and how disappointed he is. And, and I'm gutted, uh, literally gutted. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.